Thank you so much to everyone who's joining us today. Welcome to another amazing Powerfly Chat and Learn. Um, today's session is going to be with uh, Jillian from JW Player, and I'm super excited um, to get us started with it. So before we jump in today, um, I just want to say hello and welcome to anyone who might now um, might just be joining us for their first Power to Fly event. My name is Meg. I'm part of Power to Fly's virtual hosting team, and I am so, so excited to be here for another amazing chat and learn session. Um, if this is your first event, you, you'll uh, probably want to know some of the housekeeping. If it's, um, you know, if it's if you've been with us before, this will be a little repetitive, so I'll try and get through it quickly. Um, but basically, what you need to know about today is that, like all of our virtual events, today is all about you. It's about our participants and making sure that um, you guys get the resources and answers that you came to, you know, came for, to this event to get. So, if you would like to participate, which we highly encourage, it makes these events much more. Um, dynamic and um, in, like uh, interconnected um, is that you can you can interact with us in a couple different ways. If you want to, you can turn your cameras on um, and share your smiling maskless faces with us safely. There's no pressure to do so. Just know that if you are rocking a three day messy bun like some people um, or have a furry coworker or working from a non-traditional workspace, um, no sweat there. Just, um, just understand that if you want to come and join us, you're more than welcome. If you do not, that's totally fine. Um, if you do want to um, come off mute to ask questions or add comments, um, we obviously greatly encourage that. However, just know that if you do come off mute for any reason during today's session, you will show up on the live recording and the live stream of this. So if your camera's on, that's what's going to show. If it's your avatar or your display, you know, um, if it's your avatar or your display name, that's what'll show up. Now, if you have any kind of privacy concerns but still want to participate, no worries, you can still do that. Um, you can put questions or comments into the Zoom group chat, or you can always DM me. Um, I can raise your questions and keep you completely anonymous. So if you have like so any reason whatsoever, it doesn't matter, I'm more than happy to do that for you. Um, now, like I said, today's session is being recorded. So everybody who registered for today's session, whether you made it, you forgot about it, and you're watching this in the future, hi. Um, if you stay for five minutes or if you stay for the full 60, it doesn't matter. Everyone is going to get um, an email in about one to two business days that will have a link to where they can rewatch this recording on the Power to Fly website. Now, if you are, um, uh, you know, let's say that Jillian says something today that's just so mind-blowing, you have to share it right away. You can't wait one to two business days. No worries. All you have to do, you're laughing, but I'm telling you, there's a moment in every single one of these where I sit through these at least three to five times a week. And there's always a moment where I'm like, oh my God, how did I not think about that? So there will be, but if you want to share that with somebody and you have to do it soon, um, don't worry. You can always head over to our YouTube channel. I'm going to share the link to our homepage there with y'all in just a moment. Um, we have a dedicated power to fly chat and learns channel. And what's going to, what you can do there is um, you can check out the recording of today's session. Um, it'll happen, uh, it'll be loaded there usually within about five to 15 minutes of the end of today's uh, recording today. So you can always head over there. Um, I also really recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's a great way to, um, to make sure that you uh, stay up to date on all of these great chats we're holding. Um, but that way you don't have to worry about whether you registered or not, or you know, did, am I gonna be um, you know, free, away from my desk or have time free to make the recording time? So don't sweat about it. You can always check it out later and you can always share and send um, to your friends. Now, we are also on a ton of di different social medias. We are at Power to Fly on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, and just so you're aware, like, please feel free to take pictures or video as we go, share with your friends, put it up on social, whatever you'd like, um, just to kind of let people know that Power to Fly is here, that we have these amazing free resources for everyone. Um, and so we just, you know, want to share the love and share the resources with people. Um, like I said, you can tag us um, or, you know, please feel free to, to share away so that way we can reshare your posts. Um, okay, so um, as we get going through the session, I'm going to hit one more kind of like high point with housekeeping before we dive in, but that'll be a little bit later. Um, so moving us into uh, today's event, I also obviously just want to highlight that JW Player is hiring. So I'm going to share their um, their company page URL with you right now. And going, it's going right into the chat there. Um, this is, if you follow that link I just posted, it's going to take you to the page you see in front of you. Um, once you get here, you're going to be able to do a couple different things. So the company page, um, their company page on powerfly.com is going to look like this. You can check out their company info to learn some more about them. Some companies post 
you know, like information about their benefits or, you know, some stuff about their ERGs and how those function or their, their community philanthropy outreach events that they do. Um, you can also click on events to take a look at past recordings of events that JW Player or JW Player uh, uh, team members have participated on with us. And you can also see upcoming events that they're scheduled for. So you can register for stuff ahead of time. Um, you can also, obviously, the big draw is open roles. So if you click on open jobs, um, I'm looking at the live page and they've got 44 roles posted with us currently. Um, you can take a look at those open roles. You can sort through to see you know, what would maybe suit you. Um, when you navigate to this page, though, at the top right hand side of this page, there's going to be a big pink button that says follow. If you are at all interested in working with JW Player, or if you are, um, you know, active, if you're, even if you're not actively job seeking, but, you know, you're just kind of keeping, keeping your hand in, keeping your eyes peeled to see what's around, I very much recommend you click that follow button. It does a couple of great things for you, but basically what it does is it works like your friend of the company. It's going to tell JW Player that you are interested in them without you ever having to fill out an application. So before, you know, they'll know way before you submit. Um, and then it'll also keep you updated when they post new roles. So it's a really awesome way to make sure that they, you don't fall off of their radar, they don't fall off of your radar. Um, and it's really great, especially if you are, if you're actively interested in JW Player, you're actively job seeking, but don't see anything right now that really suits you. That way you can make sure that, um, you know, you stay up to date if they post something that would be great for you to apply to. So, you know, you can follow as many companies as you like on PowerToFly.com, but obviously I recommend that you take a look at, um, at JW Player and hopefully um, some of the things that you learned today from Jillian will, uh, you know, kind of encourage you along that way. So with no further ado, I'd love to introduce you to today's guest speaker. Jillian Moulton is the Chief of Staff and SVP of Human Resources for JW Player. She has over 20 years experience um, leading human resources and strategic operations at media and technology companies. Jillian is passionate about spurring growth and evolving talent in creative, proactive, equitable, and scalable ways. Um, she also holds an MFA from Naropa University and a BA in advertising from the University of Oregon. So welcome, Jillian. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to ask real quick, um, can you give us a really quick breakdown on what JW Player does? I feel like it's one of those companies that people have heard of, but maybe don't know specifically. Yeah, so the JW Player was originally created as a video player in the early, early 2000s, and it um, was actually an open source video player that was very much used by the developer community. We've definitely evolved since then. Um, so what we do today is that we have a uh, video solution for businesses that allow them uh, to monetize their content, deliver it, uh, learn about their video and their and their analytics. So if they're if your business is a video, JW Player is a really great partner to help you get that video out and learn about um, you know, your customers and, and, and your, your viewers. Very cool. All right. Thank you so much for, uh, for dialing down on that because um, I know that it can. we've got a lot of companies we deal with and people, especially if you're job hunting, you hear a lot of companies' names. So thank you so much for, dealing, or for uh, explaining that to us. Um, all right. So last thing before we jump into the questions. So what you're seeing right now is um, a, a selection of some of the principal themes we're going to try and cover in today's conversation. Now, um, what we did to get these to you know kind of pull these together, we um, we did them both in concert with conversations with Jillian prior to today's event about what we wanted to talk about, what she wanted to cover, but then also by reviewing the questions that y'all submitted in when you registered for today's session. So um, we tried to arrange those in kind of a conversational format. And these are some of the main themes that we picked out. But if you took time to be with PowerFly, if you took time out of your day to be here with us for the live recording, we wanna make sure that the time you spend with PowerFly and JW Player is well worth it. So if you have a question and you want to make sure that it gets answered today, your best bet is to ask it either on video or sorry, on audio or by putting the question into the group chat. Now, um, we, if you're not sure if we're going to get to your question, please feel free to ask. If we are addressing your question, but we're not really getting at the question the way you wanted us to, or you're not, you know, let's say we address it from an employee side as opposed to a managerial side, um, please feel free to let us know. If you want to add context to, you know, your question, that's, that's great too. Um, just make sure that, um, you know, if you, if you do have a question, you ask it before time runs out. And do your best, um, if you do want to come off mute, not to interrupt Jillian or any of our other um, attendees. Uh, I get paid to fill the silence, so I will chatter on forever. So um, don't let me be a, a barrier there. You're more than welcome to interrupt me. 
Um, and I see we do, do have some questions from people in the chat um, about hiring um, and specific roles with JW Player. I would suggest that you keep those until about the last like five to eight minutes of today's session, because that's usually what we reserve um, for going over open roles at the company, tips for, for interviewing, all that kind of stuff. So um, like I said, we're gonna try and cover these, these questions or these areas that you see in front of you, but we want you to feel free to drive the day's conversation. So please feel free to participate, ask us for more details, um, you know, just feel free. Um, so like I said, we're gonna try and cover um, some strategies to foster belonging in that hybrid space. We're gonna discuss some ways to embrace the global exchange and really build an international culture, especially when you have a team that might be spread across time zones, across different countries. Um, and then we're also gonna talk a little bit about how to maintain communication and feedback in a hybrid environment, which can seem a lot more difficult than you know, when you're just in person. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to stop my share here and we will just go into um, a little bit more conversational territory. Um, so Jillian, one of the questions we got asked a lot here um, was talking about kind of like the work-life balance there. Um, a lot of people asked if a hybrid working environment hinders close team, like close team dynamics, or does it just improve productivity with that work-life balance? Now, I don't think it's a binary. I don't think it's necessarily one or the other, but I'm more interested to hear your opinions on this. Um, what did you, what, what was your response? Yeah, I think you're, you're hitting it a little bit on the head. Like we, there is no one size fits all from a hybrid digital environment. So, you know, when we were going into, so GW player has been fully remote due to the pandemic since March of 2020. So as we were going into that, once we started to get into it, we found that people who maybe weren't as extrovert before found their their kind of like home because they maybe they were introverted they felt more comfortable now that there's kind of like equity of screens i guess you can say um but because of that there are other people who felt very you know very um hindered by it there might be somebody who's much more comfortable in person so i think one of the things that we found is that there isn't any one size fits all but the biggest thing you can do is to start finding ways for people to to essentially do what is best to them but also be included right um there is going to be a majority effect anytime you're in any sort of group communication impact and i think one thing that we found is how do you make sure that there are multiple ways Ways to facilitate people communicating. So if like I'm a verbal, I, I tend to be really comfortable when I'm verbal, it probably comes from my MFA in performance. <laughs> But um, I tend to be really comfortable talking in the moment. However, I know a lot of people who are much more comfortable slacking me to, to get my clarity. And I actually appreciate them because, you know, when you document something or write it down in writing, there's forever and like there's a lot more clarity there. So I think finding a way to welcome all, but also finding points at which you can get on the same page, I think is really, really a benefit of the hybrid environment and also leaning into our humanity in that as well, in that we are all not the same and don't have the same comfort levels. Yes, absolutely true. And I think that's something we're going to explore a lot in, in a lot of these answers here is kind of how to tweak them for multiple audiences. Um, all right. So when we're talking about the hybrid office, that was actually, you know, personally, can we just address this first? Um, when we're talking about the hybrid office, are you talking more in terms of an office where some people like people are, are free and flexible to work in office as well as outside? Or do you envision the hybrid office as a term more or like more um, indicative of like uh, a team that has some people that are fully remote and some people that are fully in office or yeah, like a mix of the two for you? Yeah, it's a good it's a good clarification. So um, at JW Player, when we say hybrid, we mean when we have opportunity to meet in one place and also be fully remote, um, just because then you have differing experiences and you really want to think about like when you're in office with two people right next to each other, how do you include the like you know five to however many you have, um, not only you know th that are remotely but also globally included. So for us, hybrid means you have a diversity of experiences when you're in a meeting and specifically social interaction. I think, um, whereas yeah, some some teams consider hybrid as the fully remote option, but at JW Player specifically, hybrid is when we have that diversity. Awesome. Thank you so much for for uh, for clarifying that for us. Um, all right, so when we're talking about this hybrid office, a lot of people wanted to know about platforms that can be used um, to, to kind of uh, help um, either integrate into this or help it work, you know, help the, the dynamic really work best for the team or for the, you know, for the department. Um, are there any platforms that you have used or JW Player uses to facilitate this? 
Yeah, I think we're still also working through it, especially as we start planning for what hybrid is in the future. We do use, um, so we have multiple communication map methods, but we use Slack at JW Player. We use, of course, Zoom and email. One of the things that we have a lot of discussions with, not only in the executive level, but down to the employees, is like, what is the appropriate usage of each of those mediums? So that's one thing that we're working on. The other tool that we're looking to find and that we're, we're testing on a couple of things is whiteboarding. Like the whiteboard in the conference room, it was like always a really great way to brainstorm. And now that we're all digital, it's not, it's, you know, it's, well, I don't know if it's just us putting on a new suit to do it to some extent being a digital suit, but we're trying to find a tool that really allows us that freedom of motion. I know some of our engineers talk about typing is not always the same as being able to actually, you know, write like a, like we, we do when we're in person and sharing. And so we're looking at whiteboarding that allows us to exchange with each other in a, a bit more freer way than say like Slack or something, which is all just text emojis, GIFs, which are all great ways to communicate, but it's not, it's not the same as like that, like connecting something right next to it and your brain, you know, your brain works in a space that is not flat, I guess you could say. So that's something that we're looking at exploring. Yeah, I, I completely, I'm right there with you. You know, it's, um, I feel like when I took notes on things in school, I like wrote longhand and I would draw and make, you know, arrows connecting things, whatever. And I feel like that's definitely that kind of multimedia, I guess, approach is, is something that, you know, you can't really experience without combining a lot of different things. So yeah, I think that's, um, that's cool. And I, I like that you guys are, are looking into or trying to find, you know, something that works. Um, Actually, we have a question from Jennifer asking if you've found any options that help improve that whiteboard experience or if you're still in that early discovery phase of trying to find stuff. Um, I would say, yeah, yeah. I would say we're in the early kind of piloting for a back, lack of a better word phase. So some teams are using things like Lucid Charts or I know Google is rolling out some collaboration tools. And, and the thing that we're trying to clarify is, is it really a software or is it literally like the implementation like do we want to you know getting all of our employees tablets and or like an ipad or something and then giving them pens to allow them to have that freedom of movement but also we're getting into this like we don't want a blanket statement one thing that's one thing that i think is a big moniker of making sure you stay human is that you must have a communication like standardized i understand especially as you scale and jw player is 200 almost 250 employees so we definitely think about standards but we also want to be able to to acclimate to the need of the role. So what an engineer, a software engineer needs versus what a, you know, a salesperson needs could be different. And so what we're doing right now is trying to pilot what is best for, you know, the largest group to be able to collaborate, I think. But definitely some things we've talked about is, is it the accessory or is it the software? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, a good distinction to make there. Um, we do have some interesting questions coming in in the chat. I'm going to address one more from our pre-list and then we'll go back to this question from the chat just so we can kind of like make sure we're closing off topics, I guess. Um, but you talked about, you know, y'all use a bunch of different video um, services as well. Um, what the, a lot of people wanted to know, like, what are the Zoom alternatives so that every meeting and team building event isn't just being held in Zoom? Um, so, I, I mean, personally, we use Zoom for everything because it's, I mean, we've been using it for years, but I understand that other people have found different things. So have you found anything that works better or, you know, a different alternative that you use to kind of spice things up a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't say that I have a, a, a solution to that, but I do know some of the things that our team have done. So um, none of them are, are kind of like reinventing the wheel, but instead of, you know, you don't always have to be on video. So doing um, walking meetings is really great. It's something I've actually really wanted to do with my HR team. Um, and if any of them are on, be prepared. Um, but like going out and actually putting in headphones and being in either nature or even if you're, you know, in an, an urban environment where you don't have that opportunity going for a walk, because I find like sometimes I find new ideas. I'm a runner. I like to work out. I get really great ideas when I when I'm doing that. And we have the opportunity now where you can actually all be kind of participating while on, on the phone. So that's something that I've heard is is really effective. There's also something to be said about like finding ways to be asynchronous and still together. That's something that we talk about a lot is, especially since JW is a global company. So we have offices in India and Singapore, and we have staff in Europe and across the US. Um, asynchronous work, how do you stay close while also contributing stuff to each other out, out of time? And so, you know, I think that there are ways that you can do that that are, um, 
that are interesting. I think Slack is a really great way to have that asynchronous communication ability, uh, but also knowledge sharing. So like when you, we use Google Suite at, at our company. And so leaving commentary and, and connecting and edits and things like that allow you to have kind of a dialogue that is not always just right here with all of us in this time and moment. No, I love that. And you're right. The idea of, of that kind of like asynchro asynchronous connection between teams can be really difficult. Um, and I mean, it's it's kind of one of those things that a lot of people, a lot of companies struggle with. So I think it's a good thing to kind of address. Um, we did have some really great questions coming from, I think it's Kate. It might be Katie. I hope it's Kate um, and Marissa. So let's address a couple of those. Um, Kate says, I'm interested in ways to build friendships with coworkers while working fully remote. Some of my coworkers are in the office sometimes, others are also fully remote. So um, I think this is one of those things that, those questions that like, I still feel like people ask even when they're all in the office, right? <laughs> like, like not everybody wants to go get a drink after work. Not everybody has the time to join a volleyball league. Not everybody, you know. And so I feel like this is a kind of a, a, a question for the ages, like an evergreen question that everybody always wants to know. But, you know, I feel like you're right. Like it, the 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 hybrid environment definitely adds a little bit more complexity to it. Um, have, are there any ways that you've found successful with like kind of building that camaraderie or having actual like friendships with the people you work with? Yeah, I think. I mean, one of the benefits of the remote environment, everybody being fully remote, is that you see a bit of their world, right? What you want to share, because there's also like the line between personal and professional is definitely getting um, mixed. But like, for example, my team, um, we all, we we the JW Player has a team event budget that we started since the COVID. That essentially is you get per head a certain amount of money to do a event together as a team. And we encourage people to do it, you know, not in like weird hours, but do it in a time where you can accommodate everybody, which doesn't mean that it always happens in the evening. Like we, you know, I have a team in the Netherlands, a team member in the Netherlands and a team member on the West coast of the United States. So like it's really 11 AM or 10 AM that we got to do it, but we made a pizza together and we got to see everybody's kitchen. We got to see everybody's different wonderful acumens with cooking, which is also a really great, great way to join. But I think cooking is like, like, the, you know, something that everybody does has to do somehow. You have somebody who's maybe a, a stronger acumen than others in it that, that, you know, like gives the recipe, sends out, that's a really great, great way to connect. But I think in addition to that, um, uh, you know, you can still do ice breaking games. Uh, I think there's still something there, but I also, one of the things that um, my team has done is when we, we do standups. So three times a week, we do a meeting where everybody gets together and you start off the meeting, instead of just talking about what you're doing, you just do it like a temperature check. How are you feeling? So that, you know, you come to the room with like who you are as well as not just what you do. Um, and I, I find that useful sometimes just to be honest, because sometimes if we're always saying we're always great, everybody's going to know that's not always true. Um, and I think during this time when not only are we hybrid, but we also have a, you know, a pandemic that has a mental and a health impact, it's always good to just be like, how you doing? Let's let's level set on a feeling and then we'll move to the work. I love that idea of like kind of trying to take that that temperature of people because um, you're right. Like. The cooking thing is so cool. And I, I can't tell you how excited I am to try the walking meeting thing as well. Um, but I, I love that idea. I love the idea of like kind of, yes, using the screens, but not just relying on them for all of the, the connection between team members. Um, I absolutely love that. And actually, you know, if y'all are out there and you've got, you know, um, uh, you know, options or ways that your teams have, have handled questions like this, please feel free. Um, let us know in the chat. Nicholas is saying that they use donut, virtual coffee, Jack's box, fantasy football, and Strava clubs. Um, Strava is a really good one. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's kind of like a combination of like video games and exercise, basically. <laughs> um, my husband uses it for biking. Um, I know I've got friends that do uh, treadmill walking or something like that on it. Um, but yeah, I think that's really great. Um, yeah, I think we have a running group on it or running and a biking group. So yeah. Cool. Love that. Um, all right, so Marissa had then asked, um, is there a suggested meeting agenda or a meeting flow to help ensure that all attendees, both virtual and in-person, can collaborate and share? Um, I mean, I know ways that we've tried to do this that some are more successful than others, um, but Jill, have you had, or sorry, Jillian, have you had to, uh, to handle this with your teams? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think one of the things is like, 
give everybody a concept of the framework that you're coming in and that allows for contribution. I think a lot of times when we are fast moving or especially in tech companies where it's kind of like figure it out really quickly, um, we forget that sometimes just giving people the empowerment to participate is a really great way to make sure that there's inclusion and you can do it in a way where it doesn't feel like your turn, your turn, your turn. It can be so much as like, hey, we're going to start this out. And, you know, here's, uh, so my husband is a product manager in Johnson Johnson, and he always has a question on a Tuesday that he gives the group that is, um, that is to kind of get people to know each other. And I've actually kind of like really loved to hear his question. So one time he was like, are you, what was the question was, are you an ocean person, a lake person or a pool person? And that just started off a conversation of like, well, I like pools. And he works with a lot of people who are based in New Jersey. And they, it was amazing. The people who are closest to the ocean were like, no, pool person. And it was very, it's a way to get to know people without making them feel like they have to overshare. But it creates a framework that like, start with that question and then talk about X, gives people the empowerment to join, feel like they're starting to flow, and then it can kind of be really collaborative. I love that. And actually, I, I, I love questions like that, right? Where it's like, interesting and kind of thought provoking and but it's not really anything that you would ever think to ask someone out of the blue um i had a friend that her favorite question is always um what was your favorite toy when you were a kid that's a good one i know and it's that's one of those things that like it's hard for people to pick just one and then they start telling you that it's hard to pick just one and so you have like some options um i i absolutely love that the pool and ocean and lake one is is really good too. Um, we've got people suggesting book and movie clubs. So that's great. Um, fitness classes that are online to share with your, with your coworkers. That's always a good one as well. Um, let's see, what else have we got questions like here? Oh, okay. So Sandra had asked another one in the chat. Um, I'm wondering about the in-person experience. Have you had to invest in any different hardware? For example, I recently read that noise canceling room mics were needed to help those online understand what was going on in the room. Um, have you had any, you know, are there any suggestions that you have for extra mics, cameras, things that people most, you know, wouldn't really think about for that hybrid work life? Yeah. So right now, GW Player, um, we, you know, everybody is remote, but we do have managed access to our offices in um, New York, the United Kingdom, um, our office in Eindhoven, the Netherlands, and also in Plymouth, UK. And just like about two weeks ago, I actually was having, I had a group of people in New York that were meeting with people who were across the globe. Um, and it did not start well. I'll full, full disclosure, it took 30 minutes to get the IT set up. But what we found in that meeting is everybody kept their laptop camera on, but muted. And then we used the sound from the room. But what was interesting is, you know, when, when you have a bunch of people in a conference room, it's not going to work anymore in a hybrid environment, just because you don't know who's talking. I mean, it's so amazing that we didn't realize this before the, we got into this environment. But if you have 12 people in a conference room and 12 on the phone, whoever's talking in the conference room, unless they have a camera on their face and you can see their mouth moving, you're like, who's, who's talking? Or you have to be really good at recognizing people's voices. So that was one way we did it because we most of, you know, everybody has a laptop now with a camera. So you just put that on. Um, and then, you know, the sound was coming through the, the group meeting, but that was a really great way to be able to identify or kind of connect that everybody still had a square and then you had the group square and the presentation. But I think moving forward, when we think about moving back to an office and, and being hybrid, I think your individual camera is still going to need to be on if that's appropriate for the meeting. I mean, I also don't want to like encourage people to exhaust themselves with, you know, seeing people's faces all the time. But that is something I didn't think about just as a human that I need to see action on a face to be like, oh, that's the speaker. Yeah, it's one of those things that's so bizarre and you don't really think about until these like kind of issues come up. And then you're it, it's so easy to, to like kind of get like deer in headlights of like, I don't, what, but what do we do now you're in the moment? Um, so yeah, I, I completely agree with you there where it's like that camera and being able to make that connection is, it's so invaluable. And it's really, it really helps, especially when things can kind of get confusing, especially if you've got like team members with similar names or, you know, similar voices, it's, you know, it's really helpful there. I, I actually nod a lot to tell people my, and I realized that in that meeting that like, I know, you, you, you know, you have to, you want to give an acknowledgement instead that is not always verbal. Oh yeah, you're right. I, I do the same thing. Um, cause I, I usually go on mute. So nobody has to listen to my dogs snoring from the hallway. Um, so yeah, I do a lot of that, like kind of nonverbal, um, like, like smiling and nodding and, oh yeah. And, you know, trying to like, kind of clear, like, uh, keep that going. So yeah, I think 
think you're right. It's really, it's interesting how, how our, our senses kind of need to be reprioritized um, for different settings like that. Um, okay, so we only have 30 minutes left in today's session. These always go really quickly. So if you have questions and you wanna make sure that they get answered, please feel free to ask them. I'm more than happy to hold some space here in case anybody would like to come off mute and ask a question of Jillian, or if you wanna keep submitting them in the chat, I can keep pulling them from there. Um, just whatever is most comfortable for all of you. Um, all right, so this next question deals a little bit with like some of the, the tougher aspects of the remote or hybrid setting. Um, this person wants to know, how do you address conflict when you have an option to meet in person with some team members while others are only online? Now, I interpreted this as like a conflict involving people from the hybrid, you know, from like the, the remote group as well as the in-person group. Um, so what, how would you address a conflict like that? Yeah, I think it, first it, de it depends on the conflict. Like, is it a stated conflict and we're coming here to resolve it? Um, I think if it's something that you are aware of or it's like you have to make a decision and everybody doesn't disagree, there is there can be value in keeping everybody equitable so you know even if you're all in an office if it's a really big discussion and we don't want to have kind of like anybody feel like you know something's happening in the back room they can't see in their square um i i encourage you like spread out in the office i mean most offices are not at full cap capacity if you have the ability to do it i would say everybody spread out take a deep breath and then let's approach the the conflict from an equitable standpoint now if it's something that is you know not spoken about in that wonderful human way that we do um where you know there's tension or there's building tension i think you you can so breathing is something we all do no matter if we're on a screen or if we're all in a room together so i always encourage when you're about to dive into conflict when there is tension just say hey everybody let's take a breath together let's make space for you know the discussion to be had without tension and i think that's something we forget we act like if we're not in the room and can't see somebody breathing they're not breathing but we all are i guarantee you um and i don't know if you're if you're comfortable if you're in a culture where you you know you welcome like people hearing other breathing sometimes you can do it together um you know get a little little um yoga breath in there but i do i do think taking a breath together is the best way to approach conflict and that's something that hasn't changed whether you're in the same place or not okay um, and I agree with you there, you know, it really just depends on what the conflict is, but um, I think it, you're right, it's, it's really important to kind of keep that communication open, no matter what way is the best way to pursue, um, you know, given the, the, the issue at hand. Um, yeah, the last thing I actually I'll also say is if you need a moderator, ask for one. I mean, any HR team or executive or department head, sometimes you need a third party. Yeah. Thank you. That's a really, I know, I hadn't thought about asking for a third party um, as like a mediator. So that's, that's really great. Thank you for sharing that idea. Um, all right. So we had a question from the comments or from the um, Zoom chat. Fallon has asked, how can I stand out in this hybrid environment? Now I was interpreting this question as like a team member trying to make sure that you, you are still visible to like your team lead or something. Um, if that's not how you intended the question, Fallon, please feel free to correct me or you can come off mute and do so. Um, oh, Fallon says yes. All right. So um, how would you go about standing out as a team member? So I think that the best way to stand out is to know what the expectations are um, as far as, you know, if you want to stand out as a part of a team. Um, one of the benefits of hybrid is that you, you, you know, there is an, there is a, a diversity of ways that you can stand out. So you can stand out by writing something down and giving a proposal. Um, you can, you can really it's standing out by thought right that's how you your stop thought or your work progress and so i think that those, those still exist it's just now you have a lot more ways to do it in 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 not in person so you don't have to worry about being the loudest person in the room i think it's actually an asset that when we're in a hybrid environment for people who are introverts who maybe aren't comfortable yelling and screaming um to to really showcase their ability to communicate by writing things down using email, using Slack to, to push a conversation that they think that is, you know, going to meet the expectations of whatever's in the room. Um, the, the nice thing I think about this is that there is a lot more thought being put into inclusive behaviors because of not only the equity of a, of a conference room, um, but also the ability to speak without speaking. And so if you are somebody who is an introvert, I, I recommend you to take the time, take your private time, take your introversion and make an output that is deliverable 
like in writing or digitally through a presentation, um, through slacking with your boss. Like the nice thing now is we have a lot of one on one conversation that you can track and you can be like, hey, you said this, I'm going to try to do that. Look, I've done it. And you, you, you know, and the nice thing about Slack is you know, I did it a month ago. You have also that tracking. So I think that that's what I would say to stand out if you're an introvert. Um, if you're an extrovert, I think it's, you know, one of the things that the power of the extrovert is that you you can bring people along with you. Um, so I think there's another way to stand out now that is looking at the people who maybe haven't stand out before and making them your allies and bringing them with you. You have a really lot of diversity of thought, I think, in people who are not extroverts, but extroverts have a really great ability to be a friend to them and speak up. So if you see somebody who maybe talks to you about their great ideas, but maybe doesn't speak to them in a group setting like this, um, check with them first, <laughs> but maybe in a meeting say, hey, you had a really great the idea the other day, how about you speak about it? And so there's also a power you can have to, to let other people stand out um, in these in these kind of, because there's a kind of a turn-based environment now that we're in and, and extroverts can use that turn base to give space to. I absolutely love that idea of giving space. Um, I'm I'm not really a leader necessarily, but I'm generally one of the louder voices in a room. So I love that idea of kind of how I can use that skill and lack of, you know, shame and, and such on my end to kind of benefit somebody else who might need the, the, the space but can't really ask for it. Um, so that's great there. I, I love that suggestion. Thank you. Um, all right. So a lot of our questions wanted to know about how to kind of minimize any sort of divide between an in-person team and a remote team. Um, now, I, I feel like we were asked a lot more of these questions when in-office was kind of the default. Um, but now that uh, like remote working for a lot of professions, you know, if you're lucky enough to, to have this uh, opportunity, a lot of people are, are you know, more dedicated to remote, I feel like, than more previously. So if you're looking at that kind of idea where like the bulk of your, of your team is remote and some people are in-house, how do you really minimize that divide? Because obviously, like, they're not going to be having the same experiences. They're not going to be dealing with the same things, generally. Um, so how, how would you go about kind of, um, how, how would you go about minimizing that divide between the teams? Yeah, I think the first thing that I think, I think about this a lot, so I haven't figured it out myself, but that there is a natural, and it might be an American culture thing, to indicate the in-person is better. And I think the first thing you need to do is start being like, but is it? Um, and, and, you know, asking if, um, you know, if the in-person is getting you where you want to go, um, I think sometimes in-person can actually make you a little bit lazy because you're like, oh, I'll just catch them near the, um, the water cooler or I'll be sitting next to them and just be able to ask them things and get, go get going. But with remote people, you have those same things. They just look a little different. So it's like Slack is literally like the water cooler. You can reach out, you can talk. Yes, you're not seeing them in your face, but you are seeing people on a day-to-day -day basis in a Zoom. So I think that being first thing to do is to stop the kind of cultural belief that in-person is always better um, because it's not going to be. Also, if we think about our customers and where we're going to be working with our customers, our customers are hybrid too. We're going to be working with them at a distance. So having an excellent in person may not be the default best anymore. It might be someone who's really good on a Zoom or someone who's really good at talking to somebody and moving a project forward asynchronously might be an incredibly better skill set than what we had before. I think at JW Player, we, before the pandemic, did very much index on in-office, just like that's where we were hiring, that's where we were based. And the, the past year and a half, my goodness, I can't believe it, it may be a year that we do this. Um, but our team has gone from being 77, 76% based within, um, you know, commutable to an office to only 45%. So we have, uh, the makeup of our team has just gotten more diverse um, as far as where we're located. And it's also allowed us to hire talent in places that we may not have before. And we're actually seeing, you know, staff that maybe left us because they wanted to move to be with family or move to another location have the ability now to come back. And it's so great to see those faces coming back. It's also great to be hiring people in Colorado, Arizona, you know, anywhere, you know, in Amsterdam where our offices are in Eindhoven, we now can hire anywhere in the UK and anywhere in the Netherlands where we're set up. So um, I think indexing on the idea of remote being as equal as an in-person interaction is the first step. Yeah, I think you're right. It's gonna cost. It's gonna take more of like a paradigm shift, really, um, to to really not see it as so much as like, oh, this is odd. It's like, no, th this is just a different thing. Um, so yeah, I love that. Um, okay, so 
let's talk a little bit about um, let's talk a little bit about kind of the physical hybrid space. Now we had a lot of people that had questions about like kind of setting up and doing like the in, you know interpersonal stuff, but the the practicalities like the logistics of having um, a flexible space with like either some people in in office and some people remote, or especially a hybrid where you've got people that have like kind of a flex role, right? You might be in office two days a week and from home three days a week. Um, a lot of this person wanted to know about um, kind of how you should think about your teams that way, um, because they said they they want people to feel like you have a desk for them when they do want to work in office, but don't want to lay out a huge office space. that's going to be empty a lot of the time, since that's obviously kind of usually negative um, for the people that are in office. Um, do you have any opinions on this or, or any guidelines that you've used or is it sort of just an it depends situation? So no, they know we're talking about this quite a lot. Um, we actually do pull surveys at, at JW Player on a quarterly basis where we get feedback from people to understand, you know, what are you looking at in the future? What would encourage you to come in an office? What would discourage you? How would you use an office? We actually are currently in the middle of one pulse survey, we're asking people what investments can we make in the next you know, quarters to facilitate a hybrid environment um, that is very much addressing the software and stuff. But when we think about offices now, uh, I think we are not, and, and somebody will definitely correct, like disagree with me on this, but I, I think that the open plan office is on its way out. And some people may be dancing a very happy jig and some people may not be. But I think that um, when people use offices, at least I think when JW Player goes back to using office, it will be for social interaction. It won't be to do heads down work unless, of course, you know, you have a home environment where your heads down work is not possible. And I think that that will be. But I think by and large, after two years of doing this, people have found their space and they find the home to be a heads down space. So offices are going to be for social interaction. They'll be for conferences. They'll be for bringing um, you know, your team together to meet in person for a week or, or whatnot, just to have that connection and build that like humanity with each other. Um, but I think that that's gonna change the makeup in, of an office. You know, you won't have, you will have the desire to have sound dampening because you're gonna have people talking um, instead of people being, you know, headphone, headphones down. I think that the offices that, that are going to exist in the future are definitely gonna be, you know, rooms where you can get together and meet, a lot of phone booths, a lot of two person, three person meeting spaces, a lot more get together, go out, come back, you know, and, and brainstorm together. And, I, and that's what my gut says. And that's where, when we're getting feedback from our staff with these pulse surveys, it's really, most people want a flexible environment where they can come into the office to work with other people. And usually around like an event, like our finance team around a close, our software team, you know, an engineering team around, you know, closing a ticket or, you know, our sales team around an SKO when we kick it off for the year. So, and, and it actually puts a nice like reason for the office there. Like we're there to get something done, which is kind of lovely. No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, when I first started working from, when I was started, started with Power to Fly, it was my first entirely remote role, but I also had like a satellite role within the same com within like a company where I had sat next to people and I'd worked in the office, but then I'd also been like moved across campus. So the idea that you have to be in the same room as somebody to get, you know, real work done is hopefully something that most people don't, like a belief that most people don't, don't cling to right now. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love that. Um, Okay, so we've got a couple of questions in the chat here. Um, Paul is also agreeing with you that um, leaving the office for social interaction is kind of a thing. Um, so we have a couple of questions in the chat, but the one thing that I did want to address is that we had some people asking questions about like about job interviews and how to counter offer for salaries, that kind of thing. I'm sharing some links in the chat right here to where you can see some of our past sessions because we won't be able to cover that topic today, but. Um, I've, I've linked you to some searches of our, our chat database that you can use to kind of go through our archives. You can also search by keyword for whatever you want to look for. So please feel free to try that as well. Um, and then, like I said, the links I've, I've sent you will take you to pre, like, you know, kind of pre-search uh, sections of our, of, our, uh, of our archives, not just one chat. Um, okay, so let's see. Okay, so this one person wanted to know, um, for the first time in my career, I'll be doing performance evaluations for both in person and remote employees. What mistakes are common in this situation? And how can I avoid them? And I think this is a really good question. Because like, I feel like when we started this, most people didn't think it would continue this long. So now that it has, we are facing these problems. Um, have you had to do like, you know, uh, hybrid um, performance evaluations with JW player? Or have you guys handled it differently? 
Yeah, so GW Player has a semi-annual, so twice a year we do a, a annual review cycle, and we have a 360 review cycle too, so most definitely if you're doing a review, and, and since we've mostly all been remote for the past year and a half, um, that was a case. We also, prior to the pandemic, had the same uh, annual review cycle. Um, I think the, the biggest thing that I would say is kind of going back, and I don't mean to be redundant, but like that perception that in-person is better is a bias we should always check ourselves on. On, right um just checking if just because someone is the same as you does not always mean their performance is better so i think that that's the first thing to check and and it's always good to like look at your goals if you you know if you have them written down and use those as your your guide posts instead of something like in person because unless a job's unless a person's job description is sitter of them right next to you then it's probably not necessarily relevant to their job. So what are the responsibilities? What did you think that they were gonna get done and how did they get it done? Now, that being said, the pandemic, I definitely think managers should also take in that like everybody's experience in response to the pandemic has been different. People's mental health has been affected. People's personal lives, like I have two kids, four and two, so it was definitely impacted by this pandemic definitely earlier on. And so everybody's experience is a little different. And I believe that like a manager should be aware of a person where they're coming from as, as it relates to the work, not as the human, but as the work. Um, and, and also, you know, have discussions about, you know, what is going on in someone's life and how does that possibly impact their work? How can you talk about work in in the world we're moving into the hybrid world it's also a lot of companies and a lot of managers are starting to have the opportunity to talk to staff members about where they want to work which is amazing like before it's always been a rote you're working wherever i work right um now you have the opportunity to talk to people about what works best for you for you to be productive and what is productivity in that space you know if if you need to not travel into the office you get two hours back a day what does that mean from a productivity standpoint? Also, if you are somebody who, who does a lot of heads down work like a coder, great. How do we work this into what we're doing now? There's choice that it's always great for a manager to be able to talk with an employee if they have that. Yeah, I think you're totally right. It's that idea of trying to break that, that, that headspace of like, well, we have to be in person or this isn't effective. Um, and you're right, like it does, it does open up um, a lot more of people's personal lives. Um, and that can be very informative for a manager to try and see like, is this a person that's, you know, struggling with, uh, you know, being a working parent? Is this a situation where, you know, this person has like a lot of health concerns over the pandemic and that's what's affecting it? I really hope that one of the things we don't lose from the pandemic is this like newfound interest in emotional, like not just emotional intelligence, but like the the kind of empathetic facet of, of what a manager does um, without obviously like, you know, kind of uh, making the work second secondary to that. Um, yeah. 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 Right. For any managers out there, one thing I will say is like, um, you always can listen to someone's personal experience. You do not have to be their therapist. You do not have to tell them how to fix it and i find that's something that a lot of managers during this period felt like the need is to fix the, the <laughs> fix the problems that their their employees were having there's you know that's not your job there is there are infrastructure in most countries to be able to support that but your job is to listen and i think a really good manager welcomes listening so i think that's something you can definitely do to make that connection with people during a hybrid environment yeah absolutely um, okay, so we have about 11 minutes left in today's session. I'm going to try and get through maybe one more question here. Um, let's see. Still team more team engagement, radio commenting. Da, da, da. I'm trying to find one from our, our questions list to see what we can cover that we maybe haven't touched on. Um, all right, so this person wanted to know about encouraging your team to come back to the office after such a long time working from home. Now, we touched on this a little bit where you were talking about you kind of like focusing on that productivity and what does that mean for you and where does, you know, where does that conversation lead you? But if you have a, a team where you really do want to encourage that in office setup, is there anything that employers or managers can do to kind of in, like encourage that other than, like you said, making it like a road, like, okay, well, we all work here now. 
Right. Yeah. I think listening is the first thing. Like it, you know, we often sometimes in, in a business environment are afraid to ask for people to give feedback because we may not be able to deliver on all of it. I think that you can always ask for feedback with the understanding that you're not going to be able to deliver on all of it. So if you are going to, if you're, you know, the, the, the company or the roles and responsibilities are going to require you to come back to an office, or you really do want people to come back into the office in order to be productive, ask people what would encourage them to come back. I mean, there's going to be a health and safety part of it, of course, that we want to acknowledge here, but there's also just an operational aspect to it. Like, what is their commute going to be? So that you also are informed and you can give them reasoning and business reasoning that are related to an understanding of their experience. I think that's a big thing. We have in our quarterly pull surveys, we've asked that always, like, what would encourage you? What are your top three challenges right now? now so that we can come back with a solution that is in a response to it instead of feeling like we're just doing it in the middle of nowhere and not you know based on our own desired motivations um, we want feedback and and i think you know always understand that you're not going to be able to deliver on all of it but that doesn't mean you shouldn't accept it for sure um okay so last question i'm going to try and get to here um this person said a lot of my employees are scattered across the country and even across time zones Informal groups have formed based on based more on geographic location than their specific departments. What are some ways I can encourage connection between these groups so that each country or culture isn't so siloed? And I mean, we face this at Power to Fly too, because you know, even you, you might work with a specific team, but knowing that there's a bunch of other people, like I think our largest concentration is down in Buenos Aires. So, you know, how would you um, kind of address this when people don't want to see that siloing or that you know kind of differentiation between? different cultures um, within a global team. Yeah, I think one of the ways to do that is to to kind of have random connections too. Some, someone mentioned Donut. Donut is a is a software Slack as a Slack tool that allows you to connect with random people, and that means that you get exposed to it. There's also something of like I think you can serve up something that's unique to a siloed group and share it with the group to bring that group into the group. Absolutely. Um, I also think one of the things we wrestle with a JW player is yeah the amount of time zones, and we have to. It's a good practice to remind people. When is the time in your local area that is should be, um, I guess, guarded for global, if a better way to say it, like there are certain times in every time zone that you're in where the most of your like group that is in different time zones is available. You should guard that time for the global meetings. And then the rest of the time, you, you know, you can you can do the ad hoc meetings. But one thing that'll turn off a group or as another is if you are repeatedly booking an 8 p.m. meeting. Nobody wants an 8 p.m. meeting, nor does anybody want, you know, like a pre-8 a.m. meeting. So um, having that acknowledgement that this time is for all of us and then the rest. Um, I think that's another way to, to bring those connections going, you know, moving forward, but also like connecting people. Connecting silos. So silos can also be really good because you have an identity. I, I really, truly believe in regional identities are really strong and great because they can train each other. Um, so there are things that I think that um, are, you know, we, we just brought on Vualto um, to our company who I know that Nick has been chatting. So hi, Nick, welcome. Um, uh, and they come from, you know, they're based in Plymouth. The majority of the staff um, are in Plymouth or Bristol in the United Kingdom and just working with their staff and the JW team, which has been primarily in New York. I have personally learned so much about what are the awesome things they do because they were in such a smaller group that we as a company can learn and do better. So like, I also want to encourage the silos, but get out of the silos what is really great for the group. I, I love that kind of getting the, the best of both worlds idea. That's amazing. Um, all right, so we only have six minutes left. I'm going to share my screen here. So what you're going to be looking at is a questionnaire that we like to send out um, prior to these sessions. And these are some of um, Jillian's answers for this, uh, these questions that we like to ask our speakers. Now, you described the company culture of JW Player as supportive. And I think that we've talked a lot about, um, a lot about, you know, kind of that collaboration. Um, but I'm really interested in your, your answer for the next question. Can you expand a little bit about, um, you know, kind of that honesty um, that, that you really feel is part and parcel of the JW Player culture? Yeah, I mean, every I've been at the company now for seven years, so I'm, you know, I'm an aged employee at this point in, in terms of a tech startup, but um, I, our CEO really sets the standard for honesty, and I think anybody that you talk to has been at the company for any time would also say Dave Otten really does care. He is, he's got a lot of empathy, but he also wants you to be 
honest with him and he'll be honest back. And I, and anytime I've gotten really frustrated and I start getting into my little, like, you know, internal anxiety, uh, echo chamber, um, going and talking to anybody at our company who's going to tell you their the, their truth, but do it in an empathetic way has engaged me right back in the company. When I ask the team to give feedback, I love that they use our anonymous feedback um, you know, link. They use, the, you know, we do engagement surveys twice a year and I've never had such good feedback, be it good or bad, given from the team. It makes me better at my job and I think it makes our company really great. Um, and, it, and so, yeah, I think honesty and feedback, be it and it doesn't have to be, I don't have to know who it's coming from. I think all feedback is valid, even if it's the most trolliest stuff ever. I take that with a grain of salt because that exists in our world. Um, but I feel like honesty is something that always keeps you engaged, even when you're at your worst. Totally, for sure. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of your tips for someone who's interviewing. Um, I'm especially, especially interested in this idea of speaking to your passions. Um, can you talk about, you know, either ways you've seen this be successful with um, applicants at JW Player or maybe how you used it when you were applying? Yeah, I mean, when you're interviewing, a lot of interviewees forget that you're interviewing the company too. Like, and, and, you, and, and they tend to try to say, you know, my interest is exactly what you wrote in that job description. Um, which great if that's true, absolutely. But we also want people who are more well-rounded, who have the potential to grow with us and also bring things to us. So if you don't talk about what your passions are in an interview, there's no way we're going to be able to know that and want to bring that aboard. We want passionate people at JW Player. And I can tell you the people who are most successful who come on board and start, their passion is just like what they wear. Like you see it when they enter a room, they talk about it, they join groups that they're so excited about. Um, so if you don't speak to your passion in an interview, you won't be evaluated on it for good. Like it's a good thing. Um, and so I think if you, you know, if you're a software engineer and you want to work with the biggest amount of data you possibly can, but you're applying for a job that might be for web player or front end, let us know. We can get you there. Like we want to know we that, that's something of interest to you. Because if you don't say that and you just adhere to whatever the job description is, we won't we won't know that. So yeah, that's really what I'm speaking to. Um, all right. So in the last three minutes we have, I know that they're obviously JW Player is hiring. Um, I'm going to share again um, where people can get can look at their company page on Powerfly. Um, of the open jobs that we've got listed here, are there any that are, you know, either within your department or something you'd like to speak to or somebody that you'd be working with? Um, yeah, I mean, the sales recruiter is within my department for sure. <laughs> So that's a role that we're going to be hiring in um, in the UK, but focused on hiring in the EMEA region, which we've had a lot of growth in, um, primarily within sales, but also with acquiring Gualta. We have software engineers and client services that we're going to be growing there. Um, we also have the ability to hire, you know, anywhere in the UK. So you know, we want a recruiter who knows how to do the full life cycle um, and really grow out our team um, in, in the EMEA region. So that's one that I know specifically with this in my, is within my team, as well as the technical recruiter, um, which is again, a software, and we hire a lot of software engineers, uh, a little more than half of our company is either product or engineering. Uh, and so we're always looking for really talented, really passionate software engineers that not only are in mid-level, but also junior looking to grow their career. Very cool. Um, and you're right, there's a, there's a lot of, of opportunities here. So I'm hoping that if y'all are interested in JW Player, you'll kind of dig in on their company page on Power to Fly. Um, we do have people asking questions about like remote opportunities in Canada. Um, so is that an is that a possibility? Um, or is that do you have do you not know um, that question off the top of your head? I would so so what today we don't have an entity in, in Canada to employ, um, but that's not saying that we won't in the future. But we also um, you know we do sponsor and we have visas for people who you know we try to do that when we can. So while I don't want to say don't apply, um, we still are beholden to the global employment laws within, you know, within the world. So um, we are, uh, so we do have, um, we're able to employ in the US, the UK, the Netherlands and Singapore. And we do um, hire, have staff in um, Mexico and India. We are always growing. 
Uh, so Canadians, please send your applications. And if we get so many of you that are so talented, we'll see what we can do to get that done. So um, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Jillian. Um, all right, so before we jump, I know we are at time. So apologies for anybody with a hard stop. Um, but I just want to say a huge thank you to you, Jillian, and to the JW player team for loaning you to us for the afternoon. Um, it's never just the hour you see in front of you. There's always a lot of prep work that goes into these. So I just want to say a huge thank you um, to, to sharing your time with us and your expertise. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. And thank you to everybody who asked your questions. I really appreciate it. Yes, uh, thank you. Great questions from people. I loved all this, the questions y'all sent in ahead of time. The questions that were asked today were great as well. Um, thank you to everybody for participating. It makes these events um, so much more, more personal and more dynamic. So thank you for that. Um, uh, so this brings us to the end of our session today. I just want to say, um, I hope that, you know, if you are new to, to our, our, you know, to the Power to Fly community, um, or if you are one of our amazing, like, long-term members, um, I hope to see many more of you on upcoming chats. We've got some great stuff coming up this week. Um, don't forget our September mini summit is coming up the 20th to the 23rd. So you got about a month till then. Um, we'll have uh, a lot of information for early career connections, mid-career pivots, um, as well as a job fair. So hopefully we'll see many of you joining us on chats and events coming in the, up in the future. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. The week goes swimmingly for you and we'll see you back here soon. Bye everybody.